Well, 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 good evening, folks. I'm Red Wilson, and I'd like to welcome you all to this little affair. We call it the Miller Studios Christmas Radio Special. Yes, tonight you'll hear all your favorite Christmas songs, and what's more, the stories behind them. It's a little program of tales and tunes to keep you all warm and cozy this Christmas Eve. Who knows, maybe we'll even get around to roasting a chestnut or two. To start off, I'd like to introduce one of the little songbirds who flits around the Miller Studios. He's recorded many of your holiday favorites, Mr. Bob Gleason. Glad to know you, right? and Merry Christmas! <laughs> well, Merry Christmas to you too, Bob. Say, you remember how last year the gang and I recorded Jingle Bells for that Christmas record? Well, I sure do, Bob. That was the record with No Days Like Snow Days on side B. And what a treat that was. Well, it turns out there's a fascinating story behind Jingle Bells, one many of us are unfamiliar with. Well, shucks, we've got the time. Why don't you tell us all how it goes? Sure, sure, but first, some radio magic to set the mood. Oh, didn't know we had this kind of a budget. So close your eyes. Well, they're closed. And just listen. Do you hear that? Crickets. Ah. And some gentle wind. Maybe a lonesome coyote howling. A coyote? Well, wait, where are we? Well, we're in Cuba, Red. Oh, we should have guessed. It's the year 1898... And a small group of American soldiers are gathered around a fire. Let's listen. Well, the new telegraph's come through, gents. From the general? Yes, and it's in code. Here, take the key and translate. All right, read it out. <clears throat> Day or two ago, ride presumed taken, Miss Fanny Bright saddle. Miss Fanny Bright? Which one's that again? Uh, Fanny, Fanny, Teddy! Yeah. Colonel Roosevelt! Brand news! <laughs> yes, a day or two ago the cavalry must have set out. They should have reached us by now. Wonder what's the delay. Hold up, here's more. Horse, lean, and lank. Oh, they stopped for provisions. Drifted bank, encountered. Ah, they were ambushed. Ground is white. The cavalry was victorious, however. Grand, grand. Upon Fanny's arrival, jingle bells, jingle bells. Ring the bell twice? The attack signal? Yes. Then it says, get bobtail nag. Oh, they're sending us weapons. Speed 240. Gatling guns, of course. Also, open sleigh to arrive. That's code for um, a shipment of trapdoor rifles and Hotchkiss guns. Oh, and they're sending a hot air balloon. Yes, within a few months, all the American forces had made little songs out of the code to pass the time. Even Roosevelt and the Rough Riders were singing as they charged up San Juan Hill. Jingle bells, 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 jingle and, well, everyone knows it now as a fun and snappy Christmas treat. But let's not forget, especially around this time of year, that our Christmases can be safe and peaceful thanks to the brave few who answer the call of the Jingle Bells. You know, friends, today in many Soviet countries, anything and everything to do with capitalism is explicitly forbidden. This means dollar bills, bonds, even the stock exchange are off limits. Well, that sounds like quite a drag. It is. What's more, celebrating Christmas itself is illegal, along with all religion. I guess that rules out Christmas carols? Only anti-Christmas carols are allowed, and no Christmas games either. Well, I know a game I love around Christmas. Monopoly. <laughs> Me too. But we couldn't play it if we lived over with the socialists. Well, how could they allow us to play at buying and selling property when buying and selling are against the law? Well, gee, what do all those people do for fun? Well, I'll tell you, they play Monopoly in secret, without a real game board or markers. You mean they keep track of everything in their heads? Everything, from the money to the properties. All they need is a pair of dice and some imagination. Boy, that sounds like quite the memory trick. It is. But they have easy ways of remembering, and one of those ways has become one of our favorite holiday songs. If we listen, we can see how it all came about. Papushkas, your papa is nearly home. Hide, hide. Hurry, we'll hide in the cupboard. Shh, shh, hurry, hurry, hide, hide. 
I don't know, dear. Perhaps the factory needed people to work longer and they may be there all night. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. I will have to open this cupboard in my sadness. Oh, 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 heavens. Oh, Papa, oh, oh Papa. Oh, I'm sorry, Papa. Oh, the blood, the blood. Oh, no. oh, my nose will be fine, I'm sure. Oh, uh, uh, Help me up. Oh, I'll help you, Papa. Your poor nose. Let me kiss it for you. Oh, no, it's... Ah! Oh, thank you. That made it all better, my paprika. Stop fooling around and come eat now. We have a lovely dinner tonight. It's Christmas dinner, isn't it? Yes, Tony. The police may hear us. Peter's right. We can't be too careful. Just the other day, I was at the factory not paying attention and suddenly realized I was humming an old Christmas carol. Oh, did anyone hear you, Mama? No, I think not. And quickly I changed to an anti-Christmas carol instead. I just wish we could play some real Christmas games, like Monopoly. It is good you have mentioned this, Tony, because your Mama and I have been talking. And tonight, we will teach you and Peter how to play that very game. Oh, but Tonya is so young. How will she remember everything? Ah, we will tell you. We know a memory device that will make it easy. We have disguised our code as an anti-Christmas girl. You'll know the anti-Christmas girls, right, children? Yes, we had the red one for a leak business I knew. It was called Santa comes to take your things. But we don't believe it. Very good. Well, if you are ever questioned why you are singing the memory song, just say, is anti Carol about the stupidity of capitalist excess? We call it the 12 days of Christmas. Yes, the silly gifts and the 12 days of Christmas are actually secret messages to teach Monopoly to children. The partridge in a pear tree represents free parking. After all, a partridge can always park in a pear tree for free. Well, it stands to reason. Two turtle doves stand for boardwalk and park place. And the three French hens are the three rolls before bailing out of jail. And let me guess, four calling birds, railroad lines. Yeah, calling all aboard. But what about the five golden rings? Well, that one's simple, Bob. Gold stands for currency, and the highest bill denomination in Monopoly is 500. And they're colored gold. Yeah, precisely. You can figure out the rest for yourselves. It's easy. I know I'll never look at that song the same way again. Say, why don't we sing it right now? <laughs> I'd love to, Bob. But I don't think we have the time.